This video was sponsored by Policy Genius. Oh, hi there. In this week's video, we're going to be working on the bed in the back of the Airstream. I know, I know, still, but it's a complicated bed and I'm making this stuff up as I go along, so cut me a little slack. Anyways, follow along, check the video description for links to tools and supplies, our Patreon account, our second channel, Bourbon Bites. If you're not subscribed over there, go do it. It's a great time. Same great content, bite-sized form. Anyways, without any further ado, let's get back in this hot tin can and start building. Oh, dang, forgot. I gotta bring you guys with me. <laughs> So here's where we left off last week. I built this platform and underneath it's a bunch of storage. Some of it you can access from outside and some of it you can access from nowhere yet. But that's something we're going to remedy in this video. I also need to build some storage on top of the platform to kind of frame in where the mattress is going to go. I'm thinking some side units on either side of the mattress, one there and one there, and they'll have a lift up top to store, you know, your clothes. Ooh, shirt. Oh, some pants. Nice. Oh, how about a sock? Yeah, oh, another sock. And then you can close the top. Storage. I just don't know exactly how I'm gonna do this. Because everything's hard in an Airstream. Now I figured because everything else I've done so far required templating, the best place to start would be to do some templating. So I took these templates that I had already made for my plywood topper and I set them in place. Luckily they fit pretty well, probably because they were sitting right on top of the pieces that I made using them. So that was nice. Now I need to make full pieces that run all the way from the back to the front. In hindsight, I should have just made all my side pieces into my storage pieces and eliminated some pieces, but I didn't. So this is how I'm doing it. Next, I went into my shop and I ripped down a 4x8 sheet of half inch plywood. Now the width of this is the widest point that my template will need to be at any given point. Then I took my template for that back corner and I stuck it at the front. I'm going to use this template and then I'm just going to add to it to get my full length. So I measured from that front point as far as I needed to to cover that span and I drew a line. It should be square. I think. Then I traced out my template to get that nice curve on the front and I grabbed a scrap piece of plywood to extend that line to the back of my template. It kind of tapers from that front curve all the way back. Then I really didn't know what to do. So I stood around and stared. Because I have to make a cabinet to fit along that curved side of the wall to store stuff in I've never made a curved cabinet like this before. So I don't know if this bottom piece needs to be the full width or if I need to trim some off for the sides of the plywood and the pieces and the dividers and the curves and the angles and the height and the width and the length and the... <sighs> oh, I wish there were plans for this, but there's not. So I will just sit here and stare and ponder and think and wonder and curse myself and regret buying this Airstream until finally I decide, enough thinking, I just gotta start building. I decided in all my pondering that I needed my base piece to be a half inch smaller on all sides because I'm gonna add half inch plywood to all sides to create a box. So I measured in a half inch from my traced out line and that'll be my new line that I'll just cut out with the jigsaw. Now, in last week's video, I got a lot of comments of people asking, why do I flip the jigsaw upside down like this? Well, it's because it makes it a lot easier to follow that line because all I have to do is look at the blade. I'm not looking around the jigsaw to see my line. Anyways, after cutting out that curved shape, now I needed to cut a side piece that will be the height of my actual storage cabinet. So I ripped down another piece of half inch ply on the table saw. There's only one problem. Half inch ply doesn't really want to bend to the shape that my base piece is. So I'm going to have to figure that out. Since kerf cutting worked so well in last week's video, I figured I'd just 
do some more kerfs in this week. So I kind of tried to figure out where I needed to cut those kerfs. I drew a couple lines and then I decided to write kerf, you know, because that makes sense. Now the height of my storage boxes is gonna be 11 inches. Unfortunately, I can't cut an 11 inch kerf on my miter saw. Now if I was gonna do a lot of these, I'd probably pull out the track saw so I could cut all the way through my piece. But I only have to do two and I'm lazy, so I just cut halfway through on one side, then flip the whole thing around and cut halfway through on the other side. It took a little bit longer, but now my plywood was nice and bendy. So I took it back over to my curved piece, I banged it a few times to remove any excess sawdust, and what do you know, now it will curve around my bottom curved piece. Man, how many times am I going to say curved piece in this video? Shut up already. Then I stood and stared some more. Until finally I decided I should probably sand this entire edge smooth so it was a little more uniform because I did just cut it out with a jigsaw and it was far from perfect. After doing that, I needed to cut my wraparound bendy wood thing to length. So I had Craig hold one side and I held the other and I measured the total distance that I needed to cut. Then I went over to my miter saw and I cut it to length. Now it was time to attach this to my base piece. So I went over to my work table and I put some glue on, hold on a second, the wrong edge. What the heck? I put glue on the top, not the bottom. You're off to a real great start, Jason. After removing the glue from the wrong edge and then putting it on the bottom edge, it was finally time to hook this piece to my bottom. Not, well, let me re back up. I'm not gonna hook this piece to my bottom. I'm gonna hook this piece to the, the bottom piece. If I hooked it to my bottom, well, <laughs> that'd just be silly. Now, hooking this together with screws would be much stronger, but would also be a pain to try and hold it in place and screw it. So I just decided to hook it together with brad nails and glue for now, and then I'll come back and sink some screws once I get it all into the correct shape. So I just worked my way from one end to the other, added a little glue, and tacked it on there. And then before I got too much further, I wanted to carry the entire piece back into the Airstream and just make sure that it was fitting the way that it should. So I pushed it against that back wall, and, you know, I was pretty stinking happy with how it went in there. I had just enough room on the front edge to add another half inch sheet of ply to box the whole thing in, and so far we were looking pretty good. So with that piece still in place, I went into the shop and I ripped down another piece of half inch ply to 11 inches high, and I brought it into the Airstream. I needed to do this because I'm gonna have to scribe that front edge so that it matches the curve of the Airstream so I can get a nice tight fit against that front wall. So I kinda held the piece in place, I pushed it tight at the top, I measured the gap at the bottom, and then all I'm gonna really have to do is cut a straight line at an angle and it should fit that back wall. So back into the shop to cut that angle, then back out to the Airstream and Wait for it. Ooh, that's nice. Perfect fit. So with that piece cut, we should have enough done at this point to go back into the shop, cut everything to length, and hook this thing together for reels this time. So I marked how much I needed to cut down my front piece, took everything back into the shop, I cut down my front piece, and then started trying to figure out how I was gonna glue all this together. I added a little temporary board at the back end of my cabinet to just kind of hold this front piece up and in place while I glued and tacked it. After testing to make sure this was going to work, I applied some glue to that bottom edge and my front curved edge thingamawatsit, and I added on my front piece. Now you'll notice that my front piece is flush with my curve at the top and then it sticks out past the curve at the bottom. And that's okay, it's gonna create a little void against the wall, but I'm gonna cover all this up with a nice white oak top eventually. So with that front section tacked on, it was time to start shoring up the rest of my box. And this was pretty easy, because now most of my pieces were square. I just measured off my box, cut them to the right size, added some glue, and tacked them in place. 
And then yes, eventually it came back and added some screws for strength. Now inside the storage box, I didn't want those kerf cuts to be visible. So I cut a thin piece of eighth inch Baltic birch because it was nice and bendy. And I was gonna add this as just kind of a skin layer on the inside to cover up the visible kerf cuts in one of the storage bays. So I put a ton of glue on the back of it, spread it out with a playing card, and then I just tacked it inside my cabinet box with a 23 gauge pin nailer. Zip zap soup, easy peasy lemon squeezy, and all those other phrases I use all the time. And now we had a nice clean look on the inside of our storage box. Then I added an end cap, that very front curved piece is just gonna be capped off. I will lose a little storage, but not enough to be worried about. And I added in a middle divider section, which means there'll be two big storage sections on either side of the bed, which I think is pretty sweet. I just glued and tacked my dividers in place, and now my first cabinet carcass, if you wanna call it that, was constructed. I gotta say, this is probably the weirdest looking cabinet carcass I have ever made. But if it works, it works. So it was back out to the Airstream to slide it into place for the 80th time, probably. I mean, there's a lot of back and forth. And what do you know? It still fits. I mean, I don't know why it wouldn't. I already tested to make sure it fit one time. This is getting a little redundant at this point. Now that I had one made, I wish I could rest. But a fun fact I'm learning about Airstreams. What you do to one side, you usually have to do to the other side as well. So it was back into the shop. I used my template from the other side to cut my shape. I then cut a piece for my wraparound curvy thing. And I went over to my miter saw and I curved it all over again. And then I bent it around my bottom piece. And then I glued it on there and I tacked it in place. Then I scribed another piece for the front of this cabinet box off of my back wall in the Airstream. I cut that to length, I brought it back in, I glued and tacked that onto the front edge, I cut some more end caps, I glued those in place, I cut another thin piece of 8th inch Baltic birch, I stuck that in there and glued that in place, I cut my internal dividers, I slid those in and I tacked them in place, and then I put on this front end cap to cover up all that ugly kerf cutting. Whew. And now we have two identical cabinet boxes, one on either side of the bed. And, well, it's definitely taller than it used to be. Is it looking right? Well, considering I had no plan to start with, sure. Now, my mattress isn't going to go all the way to that back wall. It's only 75 inches and all the way to that back wall was about 82 or 83. So I needed to build another smaller box to kind of connect my two side boxes. This one's gonna be super simple. Just a really easy rectangular box. So I took my measurements, I cut my pieces, I went back into the shop and I threw this little tubular thing together. And I slid it in place. Now this will look a lot better eventually when I get the white oak top on there and it wraps around the back and kind of connects everything and caps it off. Just look at this and picture it with beautiful rifts on white oak on the top. You see it? Yeah, me neither. Cleaning up the shop has to be my least favorite thing ever, but I have to clean up the shop if I want to actually get things done. Another thing that I have to do but I don't really love to, is think about my future. What happens if I die? Well, that's where life insurance comes in, and that's why I'm glad that this video is sponsored by our good friends over at Policy Genius. Now, normally life insurance seems like something that would be a huge hassle. Where do you go? How do you get started? Where do you sign up? But Policy Genius makes it incredibly easy to find the right policy for you, and if you don't believe me, just watch this. With Policy Genius, you can find life insurance policies that start at just $25 per month for a million dollars of coverage. Some options offer coverage in as little as a week and avoid unnecessary medical exams. Their licensed agents work for you, not the insurance companies. That means they don't have an incentive to recommend one insurer over another, so you can trust their guidance. There are no added fees and your personal details are private. No wonder they have thousands of five-star reviews on Google and Trustpilot. Oh, someone put the wrong size screws in the container. 
Now, after watching that, you're probably intrigued and you're thinking, that sounds awesome. I want life insurance to be easy, but what do I do next? How do I sign up? Where do I go? Well, that part's incredibly easy. You just go right here. Your loved ones deserve a financial safety net. You deserve a smarter way to find and buy it. So head to policygenius.com slash bourbon moth or click the link in the description to get your free life insurance quotes and see how much you can save. So why don't you cross one thing off your to-do list today and that is find a life insurance policy and make sure that your family's taken care of. Just go to policygenius.com or click the link down there in the video description and find the right policy for you. Now in last week's video, I built all this cool storage underneath the bed. See all those nice little storage cubbies? Yeah, there's just one problem. At this point, there's no way to access any of those because, well, they're under a sheet of plywood. So I have to fix that problem. I also need to add some ventilation to this top plywood layer to give the mattress a little, you know, breathability so things don't get stanky. So through a process of just kind of lifting up and sliding around that plywood, I marked on the top where all those little storage compartments are gonna be. Storage, 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 ventilation, and ventilation. Then I took that entire sheet into my shop and decided I would use my Shaper Origin to cut out all my storage holes and ventilation slots. This is when I was really wishing that I had a big four x eight CNC but I don't, so I'll just use this handheld CNC instead. The nice thing about Shaper Origin is that you can design everything right on the machine. So I just added all my little holes and ventilation strips right on the machine and started cutting them out. Ooh, storage cubby. Now I cut these in a way that each one will have a little quarter inch lip around the inside. This will give a place for the lids that I will eventually make to, you know, land on and not fall through because that would just be ridiculous. In no time, I managed to cut out all my holes for my storage cubbies and some cool ventilation strips. That's kind of all I have to say about this. I mean, it was literally just me cutting a bunch of holes in plywood, so it wasn't too exciting. Anyways, after cutting everything out, I took the sander, gave it a once over to knock down any of the little hairy edges that were caused by the router, and I carried it back into the Airstream and I set it in place and was terrified when nothing lined up. What the flip? And that's when I realized, silly Jason, you put it on there upside down. So just flip this around here, rotate 180 degrees, and plop it back in place. There we go. Storage, 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 vent, vent. Looking pretty good. But we're not done yet. Next, it was back into the shop to cut out my lids. Now my lids I just made out of quarter inch Baltic birch. They're gonna be plenty thick enough to hold up the weight of that mattress because none of my storage compartments are really that big. And then I used the Shaper Origin to cut a nice little handle in the center of each one so that I could easily take them off and put them back in. And that handle also adds more ventilation for the mattress. So just like that, accessible storage under the bed. And it looks cool too. It's a shame that you're not gonna see any of it because it's all gonna be, well, trapped underneath the mattress. Then I had to add some ventilation to this back section as well. Now this has storage under it too, but all that storage is accessible from the outside. So I don't have to add any storage hatches on that sheet, just ventilation. So before I took that inside to cut all those out, I decided that I was gonna pull out all of my newly made storage cabinet carcasses and carry them into the shop for finishing. I'm gonna try and finish everything as much as I can as I move forward in the trailer. That way I don't have to go back and finish everything later. When it's done, it's done, and I'll move on to the next project. So I pulled everything out and I carried them inside to put finish on them. And when I say I put finish on them, what I really mean is I made Craig put finish on them. But while he was busy doing that, I got to work on the ventilation for the upper portion of the bed. 
Once again, I just used the Shaper Origin, I designed all the vent patterns on the machine, and I got to work cutting them out. While I was doing that, Craig sanded the inside of all the cabinet carcasses and readied them for some Rubio Monocoat. Now we're going to use Rubio on the inside of those cabinets, but the outside's actually going to be painted white to match the interior of the Airstream. So little by little, he gooped on the Rubio. And little by little, I cut a million little ventilation strips in the top of a piece of plywood with a robot router. At least when I got to sanding, I could finally have a beer because I was working pretty hard and I needed a little refreshment. When I was done cutting the strips in the plywood, I started helping Craig finish the cabinet boxes. He was still applying a little Rubio, so I set to work putting a nice coat of white paint on all the surfaces that will be visible from the inside. And even these aren't really going to be that visible because, well, there's going to be a mattress in the way. But might as well paint them because at least I'll know they're painted and won't think about it when I'm laying in bed at night that close to unfinished plywood. Yuck. Then the fun part. After putting paint on the front of all those cabinet boxes, now we had to apply Rubio to our bed platform. And this was made extra fun due to the fact that I cut all these tiny little grooves in there, which each had to individually be hand Rubioed. As you can tell, there's no fingers in the ends of my gloves anymore because they were worn off trying to stick my fingers in all those little nooks and crannies. But thankfully, this is Rubio Monocoat, not Rubio Eight Coats. So after getting one coat of Rubio on there, I was finally ready to put all the pieces back in the trailer from whence they came. So piece by piece, I started putting our entire bed structure back together. Now I understand that this is a YouTube video and it's probably very easy to watch me do all this and think, wow, that went pretty fast. He really knows what he's doing. But let me assure you, this did not go fast. Now sure, it was a short week because of, you know, Memorial Day and all that stuff. So we didn't have as much time to work on this as I normally would, but it took nearly three and a half days just to cut all the slots in the bottom of this bed and build our two side storage carcasses. Three and a half days because everything's curved, nothing's easy, I don't know what I'm doing so I have to make everything up before I actually do it and then hope that I'm doing it right. I guess what I'm trying to say is Jason's a little stressed out. So stick with me and come back next week. Whew. Well, I didn't get as far as I wanted to this week. I was really hoping to have these white oak tops on and, you know, something to show for all my work. But I'm pretty happy with the progress so far. I got these cool storage compartments. The bed is getting very close to being done next week. I will be working on the white oak tops and then I have to build a wall that separates the bedroom area from the rest of the trailer. Now, before I end this video, in last week's video, I was reading the comments and there was a lot of people that commented bringing up some concerns they had about some things I did last week. So I wanted to just go concern by concern and address each one of those issues so that maybe I could put your mind at ease. Concern number one. So many of you guys were very concerned that I wasn't going to put ventilation on the top of this for the mattress to breathe. If you don't know why a mattress needs to breathe, it's because moisture can be trapped underneath the mattress and then it can cause a mold issue. But obviously, hopefully this has satisfied your ventilation concern. Concern number seven. A lot of you asked, how in the world am I gonna get to all these storage compartments when they're trapped under a mattress? You asked, am I gonna put some sort of gas struts on here so the whole thing raises up and you can get under there? That seems like a lot of work and is way too complicated. When I was down at Andy Rawls in Texas looking at his Argosy, he showed me that in the back where he designed him and his wife's bed, that they got a custom mattress that was hinged. I didn't even know that was a thing, but apparently for RVs you can order hinged mattresses. They're completely custom so you can get whatever size, thickness you want, and you can decide where you want that hinge to land. So I'm ordering a custom mattress that will be hinged right past all these storage compartments. So all I have to do is fold the mattress up on itself, access all this, and then fold it back down when I'm done. Pretty simple and genius solution. So there's that. I'll include a link in the video description to where I'm ordering my mattress from. 
Now when I was boxing in these wheel wells, a lot of you brought up a really good point. I mentioned that this is just flimsy plastic on here. And I wanted to box it in because obviously I can't build anything off of it. But then a lot of you guys said, well, what happens if you blow a tire? Is it going to bust through that flimsy plastic and destroy your water lines and any of your cabinetry? And then you're going to have a huge mess in your hand. And I was like, dang, that's a really, really good point. I don't want that to happen. But then I did a little digging into what's underneath this and I found something pretty cool. Let me show you. Do you hear that? I don't know if it was done when they refurbished my trailer or if it was all original, but underneath that flimsy plastic is actually a pretty heavy gauge sheet metal. So there is protection from the wheels to everything inside. So if I have a blowout, it's just gonna hit that sheet metal and everything on the inside should, in theory, be protected. Obviously, you can't plan for worst case scenario if I run over a steel bar and it gets shot up through the inside, but those things happen and I'll deal with it when they do. Weight. So many of you guys have been asking about weight concerns and if I'm worried about putting too much weight into this thing. Absolutely I am. That's why I'm trying to cut out as much material as I can when I'm building everything. That's why I didn't do just regular carcasses for my whole floor storage system. I just did dividers screwed right to the floor. And I've also been keeping a tally in my head and on paper of the total weight that I'm putting into the trailer. Now I know that a five by five half inch sheet of Baltic birch plywood, which is pretty much all I'm using in here, weighs roughly 40 to 45 pounds. And I know how many sheets of plywood I've used so far. So accounting for how many sheets I've used minus, you know, a certain amount for waste and everything I've cut out, scrap pieces that aren't being used, I would surmise that I've put less than 200 pounds into the trailer thus far, which seems crazy when you look at what's built in the back, but the math doesn't lie. Even if I used the entire sheet, I've only used enough sheets to get me to about 250, 260 pounds, and I know I haven't used full sheets because I got a lot of scrap in there. So I think I'm okay on weight at this point, and I'm just gonna keep trying to use as little material as I possibly can and keep the weight as low as possible. The other concern that you guys brought up a lot is, am I worried that I'm covering up all these water lines and some electrical? What if there's a leak in the future and I need to get to those water lines to repair and maintain them? Well, I've also thought of that, and I'm designing this in a way that I can actually remove this entire back section without compromising the rest of the trailer. These storage bins, for example, I'm not actually gonna hook these to the wall. I'm just going to attach these to the top of the bed. All these parts can be removed. They're just gonna be screwed in. So in theory, I'll be able to take these out, and then once I take these out, I can take off all these sheets of plywood, which would give me access to everything underneath. Even if I had to take apart and disassemble this entire storage system, I would guess I could do it in less than an hour. Take it all out, fix anything I need to, and then because all the parts are cut to the right size and they're all just screwed together, not glued, I should be able to reassemble it fairly easily. And you might be saying, yeah, but aren't you gonna build a door here and a wall? Yes, but I've thought about that and I'm pretty sure all the pieces will still fit out the door in theory. I know I keep saying a lot that I don't know what I'm doing and a lot of you said yeah you don't know what you're doing but it sure looks like it. Well I'm glad that it looks like it but I'm being honest when I say I have no clue about most of this stuff. So your comments are actually really helpful. I do take the time to scroll through those so if you see me doing something wrong tell me and I'll try and address it. Or if you have a fantastic idea for a way that you think I could make this project better let me know down in the comment section as well. Hopefully you enjoyed that video. Next week will be a doozy working on those white oak tops. Don't forget to check the video description down below. There's a link to our Patreon account where you're gonna get a ton of behind the scenes footage, weekly live questions and answers. There's also a link to our second channel, Bourbon Bites, where you get all the same great content in just bite-sized form. So make sure to check that out and I'll see you guys next week. Pachow!